Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast, where I, your host, Xavier Cruz, a lifelong wrestling fan, will take a lifelong friend through the action, the joys, and the drama of the world of professional wrestling. My co-host, Kelsey Silva, has been bitten by the wrestling bug, and I want to invite you to join us as I take her through the moments that made me a fan. So if you're new to wrestling and would like to get brought up to speed, or a fan who would like to relive some classic matches, promos, and segments through fresh eyes, join us as we embark on a journey through the Attitude Era and beyond. Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the New to Wrestling Podcast. This week, we watch the March 31st, 1997 edition of Raw is War, and the match card is as follows. We had the British Bulldog taking on Owen Hart in a European Championship match. We had El Mosco taking on Supernova. We had Jesse James taking on Jerry Fox. We had the Nation of Domination taking on Adam O'Brien and Rod Bell. Goldust takes on Hunter Hearst Helmsley, and in our main event, we had Rocky Maivia versus Bret Hart for the Intercontinental Championship. All right, guys, just a little preface on this one. You're going to have to bear with me a little bit. Um, I had the privilege this weekend of working WWE World uh, for WrestleMania 40 weekend. Um, so amazing. So I will make a separate smaller video on our channel um kind of going into who i met and what i did and all of that fun stuff um over this weekend um and i'll throw up some like pictures and whatever that i got um but it did involve me meeting a ton of people in the span of five days um so <laughs> each each day i was working i was lucky enough to work the signing tables um so i was lucky enough to meet lots of wrestlers past present and future um and it did however mean i was meeting about a thousand people every day for the last five days so if i'm a little bit um dragon dragon today uh you're just gonna have to bear with me um yeah doing a little re recoup <laughs> oh yeah my uh the battery is definitely depleted um but we got a show to do so <laughs> that's so such a thrill it was it was a, a ton of fun. It was a ton of fun, and um, for those of you that don't know, WrestleMania is my birthday present, or at least that's what I tell myself. So, um, <laughs> what better way to spend your thirtieth than getting to hang out with some uh, some wrestlers? That's pretty cool. Pretty fun. So so cool. Uh all right. So let's get into this episode, guys. There's a lot of. I feel like this one kind of just like was the the getting all those loose strings episode. I don't know. This felt very like some chapters were closed. Mm -hmm. Some factions were reformed mm -hmm. and some chaos is ensuing as always. Mm. Our, so I want to say like the icing was better than the cake in this episode. I agree. I agree. It was, it really was the stuff in between the matches. That was really what kind of kept the episode moving it was for sure um there was no five-star classic no ridiculous over the top like you must see this one but mm -hmm. there was a lot of um interwoven storylines that need to get pushed forward as we make our way onto the next pay-per-view so we're gonna get into those for the most part the episode begins with a recap of last week uh where brett was airing out all of his grievances against mm -hmm. america that little scuffle with um sean michaels a little war of words only this time it was in black and white and extra, just add the extra dramatic so dramatic layer. the music um, was so had so me dead. epic yeah absolutely so great it was like somebody typed in just like uh like give me suspense and they were like got it Here and it, for it worked oh my god i was obsessed uh, with the drama so in our opening contest we had owen hart taking on the british bulldog for the european championship again this is a continuation from last week where we know mm -hmm. the boys finally have butt heads mm -hmm. owen issued the challenge the bulldog accepted and here we are this one i love to see these two fight always oh I've, my god I've, it's always amazing anytime these two like get in the ring together because they know each other so well and they're you know so close they are and are both incredibly athletic mm -hmm. uh it just always ends up being a, a classic between the two um even though this kind of ended in chaos um the match itself like you can't you can't fault these two they're just, oh my god they're just they're amazing 
So, so, so good. Um, the bull or Owen Hart is clearly the aggressor in this match. He's clearly the one that's um big mad. He it, before the match even begins, he throws the bulldog into the ring steps and then picks him up and rams him into the ring post a few times Ooh, it before terrible. throwing the bulldog into the ring, throwing himself up onto the top rope and performing like a uh I guess like a blind like cross body um where he just kind of like threw himself like backwards onto the bulldog. Um this match was just amusing in that Brett was really he turned up that like extra brat um on this one. Uh there's one point where he's like punching the bulldog like in the head and he's just like he's making me mad and you're like Oh Owen Owen yes yes Yeah yes. yeah yeah um and you know Owen was just being just being Owen just Owen things really I just hashtag just Owen things love him so much even when he walked out he had both of his slammies and he said like two slammies like two time like title belt holder or like mm -hmm. two title belts and I was like technically you just have one right now mm -hmm. that's why we're here like right, because right. you potentially might have the other one but He's calling I just his love shot. him. He's calling his shot. I know the brattier he is, the more I like it. What what a sin. I know, I, I, but I mean, it's because he's he's just living his character so hard. I I love it. Yeah. Um, so really, Owen for the the better part of this match is kind of like outmaneuvering Bulldog. He's really like making the Bulldog's like strength advantage like a moot point. He's really mm -hmm. just kind of out wrestling the Bulldog for the most. Yeah. Part. Um, but. We do get into this one point in the match where the Bulldog uh, puts Owen into a sharpshooter. Crazy. Which, at, which, of course, which is the heart specialty, as we all know. Mm -hmm. uh, Owen gets out of it real quick because he's real not about quick. to be just embarrassed by having to tap out to his own move. That uh, would be crazy. Right. Hits God. the Bulldog with a vicious insiguri, like flips the Bulldog like all the way inside out. I mean... Uh, they take it to fight on the outside. The bulldog suplexes Owen on the ring, like the ring ramp, um, just on the way down. And you're just mm -hmm. like, ooh, that's Owie. There, there's no good way to fall on a metal ramp. Like there is no, no, not at all. Right. Even uh, delicately, if you were just like, eh, no, it's still painful. It, it's still gonna hurt. There, there is mm -hmm. no, there is no nice way to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they eventually make their way back in the ring. They're they're tussling. Owen throws Bulldog into the ropes. The Bulldog ends up taking out the referee. And then so that, hard. Like, poor Earl. Or like, it was like, it was like a car crash. He hit it Earl was. with full force, knocked his ass out of the ring. Just And the only shot. reason we know Earl is not dead is because he comes out and refs the last match. I think that was Earl. Yeah. That's yeah, the only yeah. way we know he's not dead because they literally, this man gets projectiled out of the ring. And then they just leave him for dead. They never, no one ever comes out. No one ever says anything. Nothing had just Earl. I, I go, are they just going to leave? Because like a lot of events ensue. And like five minutes later, I just go to Xavier. I'm like, are they just going to like, is anyone going to come out and get Earl? Or they're just going to leave him to die there? And Xavier goes, oh no, they're going to leave him to die there. I was like, right, oh, right. Okay. Right. We so. got re to remember in the hierarchy of needs, the ref is pretty low. So what a <laughs> It's terrible. Poor Earl. But he came back out. He said, I'm here to get a check and I got to ref this other match. So I guess I'm I'm up. Amen. So after the ref has been taken down, Owen decides he's going to go grab a steel chair. He's like, all right, but now it's time to cut those corners, get that championship, get that extra bread. So he's doing his thing. He comes over and starts like, he's going to attack the bulldog. The bulldog knocks it out of his hand. They're like feuding. And then all of a sudden... Bret Hart comes down and you're like, what is uh, going what is happening? Because Bret has wanted nothing to do with either of them I'm saying. for months. Months yep. and months and months. Um, honestly, years, if we're being more accurate. Being so so real, yeah. Um, so he comes out and he's like trying to like break the two up, and they're clearly just like not about it. Like they're fighting like over Brett. They're shoving mm -hmm. each of them are shoving Brett out of the way. It is very much just like a sibling fight is what it looks like like so it is, hardcore you know what i mean because it, it, there's just as much shoving as there is just like annoyed yelling at each other fully, like, fully, fully, fully. Um, it really gave like oldest breaking up the middle and the youngest mm -hmm. or some right. order of hierarchy there like right, it was right, really right. it's like you want to see them fight and you understand why they're mad at each other and but you have to like all right all right like get back get back get back 
Uh, so basically, Brett like grabs a microphone and he's like, "Wow, like why are we fighting? Like this is all of the fans' fault. Like the fans are the ones that have turned, like Girl. have torn this like family apart. They don't appreciate family like values in America, and like so they've turned us against each other." He's like, he goes like Brett. Uh, he goes to the Bulldog and he's like, we fought um, on like the grandest stage at like uh, Wembley Stadium because they had mm-hmm. like a crazy match for the Intercontinental Championship that um, the Bulldog ended up winning like in mm-hmm. his home country. It was a big deal. It was a whole thing. Um, and Owen and, and Brett have obviously had their feuds. They've had multiple matches where they have faced each other, including one that opened up WrestleMania 10. And so they have a long documented feud, but he's like, but I need you guys. I need your help. Oh my um, God. So you kind of like, you're like, Oh, like, what is this about? Um, and then Brett starts like really like pulling on those like heartstrings. He's like turning to like his little brother. He's like, I love you. Owen. Owen starts sobbing like immediately, immediately. Like, I- immediately. Um, and which honestly, same. And same. So, <laughs> um, literally gets told one nice emotional thing, breaks down. And so <laughs> <laughs> um so he's like, uh, like I need you guys, like we are we are like supposed to be a family, like basically this is the reformation of the Heart Foundation. The Heart Foundation uh included the members you see before you, as well as um Jim Neidhart, who is another brother-in-law essentially i see uh, yeah 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 um so girl um that they were you know big in the early part of the 90s um they you know went their separate ways all of these feuds between them have ensued since then and this is them kind of reforming but now they are the heels they're bad guys so this is kind of a variation of what we had kind of known before which is pretty cool. Very exciting. So I've never seen the Heart Foundation. No. Didn't this know is this was a time. thing. This, I'm not going to lie, I'm really into this angle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really into this because, you know me, like any sort of family thing, I'm all about. I'm all mm-hmm. about like the ties, what the ties that bind, the ties that break us, the coming right. back together, but it's woven with different fabric. Like I'm all about that storyline. Especially because I, and it's funny when we were watching this, like watching Bulldog and Owen fight, I literally was like, you know, what's so crazy. I'm, I always go on and on about how I wish they did the brother angle with Bart and Billy. And I'm like, it is weird that they don't do as much brother stuff with Owen and Brett or like they haven't in a long time. Mm -hmm. And then literally Brett came out and I was like, oh, okay. Like, like, cause I love to see it. And and I will say like, that is in part because of where we started this show. Right, right, like right. we missed a, a good chunk of their their feud. Uh right. or like the main part of their feud. And we will have to go back and watch that match because it is a classic. It I is would a love classic. to classic. But yeah, I'm, I'm really like, into this. Yeah, as far as like WrestleMania matches that you like need to see and haven't yet, it's Brett versus Owen and uh Brett versus Sean, the Iron Man match. Also, Sean mm. versus Razor Ramon in a ladder match Ooh, also was really You know really I love a ladder match. You know so ladder we, match. Got, we got a list of stuff we got to go back to, but <gasps> this Attitude Era train is is rolling and we're on. I'm excited. So. I'm kind of excited to see. And like, especially the feud with Bulldog and Owen, it's like, yes, you want to see them fight, but I like when they are together also. Like, they're mm-hmm. just such an amazing tag team. And so the three of them together, like, I'm kind of into it. I don't know how it's going to go in terms of like, because, you know, Owen loves to be like, I'm the leader. And like Brett is like, no Obviously girl, the like I'm right. the leader. Yeah. So I'm right. curious. I'm curious how the dynamic will go. But for the minute, it's very thrilling to me. I won't lie. No, I'm here for it. So Brett like hugs them all. They make their way to the back. Um, in our next match, we have El Mosco uh, taking on Supernova. They are both of the AAA organization in Mexico. And this match has Sunny on commentary, which... Uh, essentially pulls focus from the entire match as Sunny yeah. is uh, one to do. Uh, so basically this match is supposed to be presented to us to give the AAA wrestlers a platform. But what we have essentially done is just given 
instead of just giving the two Latin American wrestlers in the ring the platform, we've just given it to the white lady on commentary. So we wow. are just the white lady on commentary who's pretending to that she knows Spanish, which was just to really just extra tonight. uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. There, there's nothing um, more cringe uh, as a, um, a Hispanic person than watching somebody just absolutely fumble the language fumble the language and think it's cute it's never it's not cute it's it's i appreciate that you want to you know try and connect if that's what you're trying to do uh but there are better ways to do it so yeah. let's let's work on that wwf <laughs> period and you know what else is why it's also not cute it's because like we don't think it's well we not us but like a lot of people don't think it's cute when when non uh English speakers fumble the English language. We really ridicule people for that. So then to come back and like make this make um like Spanish like funny and a joke like you can't speak it is just like mm. okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's just like tired. Um but essentially I couldn't really tell you any details of the match because we literally spent more time on looking at Sunny on commentary and then looking at Sunny on the Spanish commentary table and then making jerry upset uh because she had left his table to go to the other table because apparently he's all of six years old and yeah so it was just kind of awkward flirting from the spanish commentators with sunny mostly because she doesn't understand spanish and they were trying to like make light of the fact that she was there by like trying to speak with her in Spanish, but it was just like awkward because they'll be like asking her like a, a, a legitimate question and then she'll just not be able to answer because she doesn't speak Spanish. So it's just mm -hmm. really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, El Mosco wins the match. Don't know how, but Jerry's upset, which is apparently the main story here. Yeah. And we're moving on. And amen. <laughs> amen to that. So. Next, we have the Legion of Doom interview with Jim Ross. Wow. Um, this one's, you know, just short, sweet, to the point. Of course, we got to get that LOD entrance um, because it just has the entire arena in a fit every mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. um, they come out and basically they go, first of all, Bret Hart, don't you dare insult America. <laughs> like, they were just like, first and foremost, let's deal with that. And basically, they were just like, we're taking those titles. I don't know why you think any other conclusion is what's going to happen, but you're mistaken. Yeah. We're going to kick the crap out of you and we'll be glad to do so. And that's yep. basically the Legion of Doom in a nutshell. Love them. Right. <laughs> Me too. So that's good. That's a match I'm very excited to see, especially now that we have Owen and the Bulldog on like the same, the same page again. again, because literally if they were still in the middle of this like feud, it as much as I would have loved it, Legion of Doom would have just like walked through them. Yeah, like uh, steamroll them. But now that they are on the same page again, we have a little bit more of a a fighting chance. Uh, yeah, because I don't I don't necessarily want it to be like just a like one team gets flayed. Like mm -hmm. I, I you want to see like a legit fight, like a right. good back and forth. So very very exciting, and I love that LOD just like okay, like right. I don't care if they're united or torn apart or I'm still gonna rip them rip them to shreds. And I think they said something about like, we're gonna knock the doggy cakes out of the dog yeah. biscuits out of Bulldog or something, yeah. which is just funny. To yeah, me, it was but... just, yeah, it was silly. Love um, them a lot. So next we have the Honky Tonk Man coming out for commentary because it was kind of bandied about that like, he has to make a selection. He's tired of watching matches. He's tired of looking at the footage. He needs somebody to represent him. Mm. So Jesse James comes out singing that theme song. But the weird part about this episode was that he was just accompanied by a random child. An who was unidentified apparently his child. Guest manager. What does that mean? Why Is, is that your kid or here? not? Are you the father? Maury, get in here. Right. It was just like, he just like, had just walked a child to the ring essentially and then um, kicked him out and this kid looked terrified for his whole life he was right just fully looked not, like he did not, not want to do that it. yeah, mm -mm, yeah. Mm -mm. um no jesse thanks. james was taking on jerry fox who uh was already in the ring therefore we know this is a squash match mm -hmm. so um it ends fairly quickly uh jesse james finishes off with the, his like pump handle slam calls it a day and the honky tonk man comes into the ring with his little fancy guitar and he's like, you have 
all the tools. You can sing. It. You can dance. Like, can you play guitar? This guitar has been in, like, my family for generations, and it has, like, built stars and whatever he's gone on and on about. Um, so he hands over the guitar to Jesse James, and Jesse James is, like, acting all stunned about it. He's like, well, golly gee, honky, I just don't know what to say. <laughs> and... He takes that guitar and smashes it to smithereens. I'm talking first strike on floor, complete combustion of guitar. D deceased. Shrapnel. It was amazing. And Incredible. Kelsey has never, I, I don't think, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I, I will say, I don't know if you've known Vindication like this. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, um, a lot of beautiful things happened for me this episode. Um, a lot of people got punched in the face that I really wanted to. But this was, I want to say, even though there's a really good one we'll talk about, but like this was a good one. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I want to say clock it, clock the record. I knew he was going to go after Double J. I was like, this is the only match that makes sense. He's the only wing ding who freaking sings. Mm -hmm. He's the only like whatever. I was like, it doesn't make sense because we never see this man. Mm -hmm. But whatever like i just know it has to be him right and i literally i'm watching this and i was like double j redeem yourself in my eyes right now no redeem literally yourself in my eyes right now and tell him no sir no mm -hmm. but instead of telling him no he just destroyed the guitar which is even better it's just it's so good smashed it Honky Tonk Man was speechless because he thinks he is the just, you know, the king on God's green earth. And he was like, this cannot be happening to me because, of course, why would you ever say no to me? I'm the Honky Tonk Man. But, like, I just, he smashed the guitar. And then he goes, just a little, Jesse J just takes mine and goes, sorry, Honky Tonk Man. It's a little out of tune for me. Mic drop. Peace. Leaves. Yeah. Walks up the ramp, turns back, smacks his ass, leaves. Boop, boop. I... I have to say, there's a lot of people who are redeeming themselves in my eyes. Like, mm -hmm. Triple H at the Slammies, when he said, look at it, wish you had it, eat your heart out. I was right. like, I'm now a fan of Triple H. I've never rode harder for anyone in my life. Same thing with Jesse J. Jesse right? J, this is what I wanted. This is what I needed. I feel like my soul has re-entered my body. Amen. I I'm Amen. just so grateful. Thank you for this moment. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Next, we have another squash match in the form of the Nation of Domination taking on Adam O'Brien and Rod Bell. Fun fact for all of you people that are uh, not necessarily new, but um, keep up with whatever's going on in today's world. Um, Adam O'Brien uh, becomes Adam Pierce, who is the current general manager of Monday Night Raw. Um, super, super fun fact. Uh, so, no, literally. No. Um, because I was looking up the the matches on the card earlier, and I was like, oh, like Adam, I don't know who that is. And like I looked at it, and I like clicked on his name, and I was like, oh snap, yeah, it is the current general manager of Raw. So what a fun little little full circle moment seeing that him in his little squash so... matches. I love that. What what? Wait, he... never mind. I was gonna say something inappropriate, but I was. Go ahead. He has a great ass. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Good for him. I literally yeah. was like, he's the one with the, I was going to say he's the one with the great ass, right? And then I was like, oh, and I was like, but he is. Like, it, he is. it was great. <laughs> it was really, I, I literally was like, mm, he has a great, like, butt to thigh ratio. Love that. Like, like a turkey leg. like humongous, but he's got like a great shape. shape. Yes. Oh my God. Thank you. <laughs> love that. Love that. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, we respect you, Adam. Sorry. So basically this was a squash match for the nation. They are currently leaderless. So they're just like. You know, we, right we don't have – without Farouk uh, at this point, the nation doesn't really have a point. So this was just kind of like a, here, we'll just feed him this random tag team um, just to keep him going until Farouk comes back from his injury. Yeah. But we did get a phone call uh, with our boy, Shawn Michaels. Sweetheart. Um, and basically, he kept it, like, pretty short. They asked him about how he – how that felt basically being in the figure four leg lock from Brett. And he's like, I'm pretty sure me like hollering in pain probably gave it away. It didn't feel great. I <laughs> like, love him. He was like, like me screaming in agony. should probably paint the picture for you, but it wasn't great. Like I just, right. <laughs> it was not great. And basically then they go, um, and they, they ask him, like, if he has anything to uh, say to, like, Bret Hart. And he's like, oh, I've got tons to say to Bret Hart, but I'm not going to do it over the phone. Uh, he's like, 
So I will be there next week and I'll say what I need to say to Brett himself. And then he hangs up. Iconic. I love that. I love that he's love just that. like he's just like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this like little gossip hour with you. Like I'm just gonna say it to him. I love that. I Much love respect. that energy. He's like, I'm gonna say it to his face, not like I'm not gonna three way call you and Jerry. Right. And give you the goss. I'm going to yeah. just deliver the goss hot, piping, and ready. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Love he, that. And then he's like, bye. Uh, I love that he I love that he hung up on them. I, I just thought it was such a, like, power move, you know? Oh, it was amazing. Jerry was a shook. He was oh. like, wait, I had things to say. And it's like, well, too bad, girl. Line <laughs> well, disconnected. Too... <laughs> That's right. You can tell it to the to the Ethernet cable. Yeah. Tell, <laughs> tell it to the... The, uh... the phone jack. The, oh, the <laughs> operator. Because... <laughs> He's not answering. Bye. Bye. Ugh, love that man. Can't love wait to see guy. what he has to say next week. Mm. Uh, we get a little, uh, a little recap on the uh, happenings of Ken Shamrock. They go into like how he basically taught uh, Billy Gunn a, a little wrestling lesson. His involvement in the Bret Hart Stone Cold Steve Austin match, mm-hmm. and basically he's so like. He's become so popular that they're going to have a no holds barred exhibition next week, like with Ken Shamrock. So I can't wait to see who his victims are. Like, is he just going like demonstrating submission I, moves on people? I don't know, but no holds barred in WWF usually means chaos. So we'll see. Like Stone Cold has to come out and give him like the the pump, sauce, right? right? The because sauce, like, yeah. He's he's still big mad that. Ken Shamrock called the match. So yeah, he is big piss. Love that. Can't wait to see what happens there. Um, yeah. because if it's more of the hottie boo body, then I'm here for it. Yeah, I the fit better be right. I'm just saying because you can't bring me to um the peak of Mount Everest with that beautiful little ref outfit and then take me back down to like baggy sweatpants. Like I'll be very upset. No. I mean, I can get into baggy sweatpants. No, yeah, in obviously. A certain way. I'm not crazy. right, right. But like, you know what I mean. Like no, the no, fit no. better be right, I'm just saying. No, I understand. I was like, do not get, grace me with beauty and then dump a frock on me. I'll be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be so upset. Not <laughs> I'll, the frock. I will be livid. Frock oh. is like the not the worst thing. To say. <laughs> yeah, because it's only used by like wizards. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, uh, wow! Last time missed. I like heard oh. the word "frock" like out in the like the wild is um in Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think the last time I heard the word "frock" is like when I watched Bridgerton. Like I oh my god. don't think, oh. or maybe like the last time I watched Sound of Music. Like I don't know. Mm. Amen. Shout out to the frocks. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's it. <laughs> That's absolutely insane and means nothing. <laughs> Just so you know, that was totally meaningless. It's not like the frogs are like, hey. <laughs> uh, the the uh, tip never... frogs, not on my bingo card for this episode, but okay. <laughs> I never know what's, what it's going to be. Like, there's always going to be something that, like, you like never forget um the, the phone gets like go back to a nest <laughs> and i was like what like where what a journey we take i never know what it's gonna be but i always know it's, it's gonna be laugh and it's gonna be delightful oh amen wow frocks so <laughs> <laughs> let us know if you guys want to see uh new to wrestling merch uh frocks so. <laughs> that purple and black if you're trying to wear the ntw frock let us know <laughs> <laughs> what would that even entail i can't oh hey, ooh, gotta hey. take it to the what do you call it <laughs> <laughs> the what <laughs> the what do they call it the meetings like where they like taste test things a focus oh, well. group Take yes, the focus, the focus group. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. No, no, no. Too no, far. Get... Now it's too far. <laughs> bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back to explosion, contusion, concussion. Oh my God, Vince today with the like just man adjectives. That's how I'm gonna just <laughs> describe them. Is, is when he opened the show, what did he say? Do you have more? I do. Mortars, rockets, bombs. Right, That's and then it. to open the second hour, he said, 
explosions, contusions, concussions. I listen. I I I was I told Kelsey during the episode that we were watching. It sounds like like Axe body spray got their entire campaign from, from Vince. The, from like, Vince McMahon. The, anything anything that they like, any product that they make that is essentially a unisex product that they just make for men by mm. adding words like adventure and like primal and you're like yep it, it, this is stupid and we're dumb for falling for it it was just yeah. that shh, shh, shh. yeah it was just that we were just like oh Holy. like this is for men because they're using explosions and concussions. mortars yeah <laughs> mortar like unbelievable concussions right. concussion as an expletive is hysterical just <laughs> concussion <laughs> like, <laughs> just like, like... Mm. Um, like, are you casting a spell? Like, right. what is this? No, 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 no. We are, we are ill. Unreal. So, uh, we finally get a continuation on Paul Bear begging. I hate him. And pleading. Weasel. And just, there is nothing like a gold digging snake to Girl. just come out and ruin everybody's day. So, Paul Bear Thank comes you. out. And he's like, and he's like, I've made a mistake. Uh, but he's like, but it was all for you, Undertaker. It was all for you. I you was just like, said you made a mistake. I was like, baby girl, you were actively attacking this man with just increasingly larger and larger psychopaths. I swear to God. And, but it, it was all so that the Undertaker could become his own man. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, and now, and and this, and the like, the thing that gets me is like, if you're gonna like, be a gold digger, like, give me like, make me like, ca catch me unawares. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like, like, if you're gonna play that game, like, at least be good at it. You know what I mean? That's a really good point. Like, sneak in. No, because literally, in. his next sentence is like, and now you have the WWF championship, which is like. We all know that's why you're here, Paul. That make it we, more obvious, please. Right. We all know you're not sorry. You're not sorry. You want that extra bonus check that being with the champion gives you. I, uh, we uh, all know. We all know. I'm saying, unbelievable. Oh, uh, disgusting. So, the Undertaker makes his way out. For some reason, there's like a casket just on the outside. Again, not uncommon with the Undertaker, but just kind of oddly out of place just with this segment because it's not like we're like headed towards a casket match we're not like i don't know uh yeah. so it was just kind of it a weirdly weird. placed casket the undertaker <clears> comes <throat> out and like with a casket key like locks it because apparently like we're not having any of that today goes in and he just the first words out of his mouth are betrayal and you're like what I literally was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. No, literally though. No. Like, I, like... <laughs> such a, like, it was just so deep. And so like, oh my God, he's calling him out for his shit immediately. Oh, so Go thrilling. Um, so, uh, but the, he, he really like has us going. Cause he's like, I may be able to forgive. He's like, I'll uh, never forget. And I was like, that's right. And he goes, but I might be able to forgive. And I was like, no, <laughs> Go back. Don't take it do back this. and we really he really like he really sells it because like he goes and he hands paul bear like the wwf championship like in his hands um and it's just like paul bear is like drinking it in he really thinks he did something there uh so the paul bear is like turning around the undertaker as soon as paul makes his way around that 360 bops him right in the face mm. takes him down it was beautiful it was beautiful so finally this was exactly what we've been looking for this, these are the it. loose strings we have been talking about he mm -hmm. has not been able to get his hands on paul this entire time the entire since summer slam of last year he has not been able to actually put hands on this man and he knew this was his opportunity he said this little snake is groveling i'm gonna make him think i'm gonna give it to him and then i'm gonna sock him it, was it is just the best because you just know he's standing there and he knows what he's gonna do so he's watching paul bear be like i made a mistake and like right. just la 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 take me back and he's just like mm -hmm. plotting scheming mm -hmm. waiting laying in wait mm -hmm. i just 
and then just socks him right and he literally is like his hands are full he can't even put his hands up to defend himself because his hands are full with the title belt that he got without you right you gotta hold that it's the only time you're ever gonna hold it right that's it i hope you enjoyed it i hope i hope it was worth it and then enjoy this black eye that i just gave you amen uh so mankind of course who we thought was going to be like real pissed at paul um for, yeah like just absolutely ditching him which we we should address mankind he yep. done did left you high and dry just Maybe. he said i don't need you anymore i don't know you i'm going back with my other mans I, i've never met you this was a mistake and Unreal. like fully and then he, mankind comes crawling out from under the ring Granted, he is the number one contender, so he was probably going to do it anyway. Right. It looks like he's coming to the defense of Paul, and who wants that? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody asked for that. But Mankind does something that shocks us all. Girl. He throws essentially like a fireball. How he did that, I'll never know. No. Uh, in the Undertaker's face. And it looks like they replayed it like a bunch of times. Like, it is like in his face. It's like, for I, sure in his face. I'm blown away by how just how they did this zero regard for the eye sockets because because they were outside the ring paul like which first of all undertaker grabbed the whole urn with one hand which hot like just was like "Mm, mm." and he's gonna like smash paul over the head with it and then mankind comes out and he's like boop boop we do and you think undertaker is getting the jump on him because he goes to smash paul and it's like he had like the intuition that mankind's enemy goes to turn and like Mm. mankind just like Right, like w- right in the face. It was yes. really crazy. He really said "rot, rot" like a dungeon dragon. He like, <laughs> like fully just blew a, a fireball in the oh same my face, God, no. like it was normal, <laughs> like, <laughs> like as if this was just like a part of his character. He's a barb the girl, <laughs> unreal. <laughs> um, not mankind being a barb. That's crazy. Oh my, her. I mean, oh. wow. So, like dragon. so very upsetting, right? So the Undertaker is just like blind and stumbling, like all over the place. Uh, Psycho Sid comes out and like chases mankind like out of the arena, which is so random. Like so random. Make it make sense. Like I'm confused. The only thing, and this is a stretch, is like because Undertaker helped Sid during the cage match, but because he wanted a title shot, right? Like he helped keep brett in and like slam the door in his face so right. he, but then like so that he could take the title from you right so i don't know so it don't make no sense to me no it's 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 weird um really and then weird. we get uh we catch psychos in backstage which uh, is usually not that helpful as far as no it's- logic and thought processes and whatnot um but basically he's like mankind like you want to play with fire you're dealing with somebody who knows how to deal with fire and i was like there was again when there's the phrase that's like right there and then you just don't say the phrase (laughs) you're just like okay Okay. um but basically he just goes on to be like the undertaker was like the better man at like wrestlemania and then he's like i i don't get i I don't understand how he connects them like i really don't um but basically he tells mankind that he's gonna burn in hell and then that's kind of the end of the promo and then we're all left confused i don't get it because like i just don't get it i don't get it why Why are are you coming to help like i don't get why why you would want to help any of this like all of a sudden undertaker's the better man than you and like he is but i i where is this coming from are you a reform did like a concussion like change your perspective the medulla oblongata like what what happened what What happened happened? i'm really confused i don't understand it hopefully it's explained i don't know though because it's psycho sid so even if he tries to explain you're often left more confused than you started i agree so i guess we'll see so yeah honestly we'll see um Next, we have Goldust taking on Hunter Hearst Helmsley, a rematch from WrestleMania 13. Only mm. this time, managers are banned from ringside. So mm. no China, no Marlena. Uh, Goldust comes out swinging. swinging. He came in with the heat. He literally, first strike is with his wig. 
he takes his wig and just like slaps Hunter like across the face with it and then just starts wailing on him. It's I so funny. It. Which it's is so great. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's exactly how that man should rage. It's, Thank it, you. It I'm is, saying. It is wig flown. Uh, at all costs. And for whatever reason. By any means necessary. I love it. I love it it's so great. much. Um. Jerry has been just crying on commentary all night. I don't know what his deal was, but he did say at one point, he's like listing off all of these things that like happened to him, like Sonny, like leaving the table. Um, and then he's like, the Easter bunny left me no basket this week. Which was <laughs> which was just like hysterical. so absurd. Oh, man, um, so good. And then at one point he also, he's like, they're talking about how he's suddenly like agreeing with like Bret Hart. Um, and he's like, well, it's because Bret Hart's finally like seen the like, seen like the light and he's like talking about like america he's like the country that gave you the civil war and you're like <laughs> what jerry like okay honestly took me out like because you know Bret Bret hart's whole thing right now is like boo boo america whatever mm -hmm. and jerry's and they're like what do you mean don't say that about america and jerry's like america the country that gave us the civil war like right. like he's like me support <laughs> that <laughs> not me never in my life so, would never support this oh my god war. i just love what a fake flip-flopping bitch he is I, it's so funny oh my god that really took me out i was crying because also that's almost like a like a meme thing today where it's like you want me to support that the person that gave me whatever like it's almost right. like a thing today too right. which so it's just so funny you want me it's for america the country that gave us the civil war he's like so that's funny he's like that's crazy of you that's why couldn't be me Honestly. couldn't be me but whatever so the match is like continuing hunter cannot put away gold dust he's getting like more and more frustrated about him him and his great hair he just I can't love... he just can't handle it um so the match is continuing and then we hear on commentary well, look who it is. Mm. And then we go and we see China, it. top of know. top of the apron, just looking she's like, I don't want to, it's not like statuesque, I guess is how yeah. I want to put it. She's unmoving, just like, looks like she's made of stone, just <sighs> mean mugging, just yeah. doing her China thing. Um, so the match is continuing in the ring, and it looks like Goldust is going to pick up the victory. He hits Hunter Hearst Helmsley with the curtain call, goes to cover. China runs into the ring and hunts that man in the ribs like so she was putting hard. a football through the uprights. It was <laughs> crazy. It was she like honestly, like if an if his organs were outside of his body, they would have just been clear into the crowd. <laughs> just, she would have just been launching them like into like the upper decks. Like it, I'm amazed like his kidney didn't shoot out the side. Like that's what I'm in saying. In an old school, like Kung Fu movie where they get like punched in the back and their heart like explodes out of their chest. Right. But it was that hard and that like, it made that much contact. I legit expected his like just- No, just- Lung. Oh, Gone. it was great. She hit, she kicked him so hard. Um, and then it was just chaos from there. Yeah, so oh my god. All of the referees come out to try and like separate all of the two. Uh it's they're like pushing like China like off of it. Pat Patterson comes out and he gets into it with Triple H at one point. Triple Pat H like Patterson hits the Pat. Hands. And then Pat's like, uh, excuse me, I think you're forgetting who you're messing with. Um, and he's like, I'm WWE Hall of Famer, Pat Patterson, and comes back just with the smoke. Like Amazing. it was crazy. I was Ugh. like, I was like, Pat, Pat with the sweaters. Okay, Pat, Pat. I swear to God, Pat was in his uh like athleisure wear, and he like gets knocked over, and I'm like, oh man, I hate when they knock over Pat. And Pat was like, hmm, me too, and gets up and is no, like, no, literally. <laughs> oh, it was so so, so good. Good. I love Pat. Love mm. Pat. Amazing. So at one point, um. Then they China comes and smacks Pat from behind, and the two of them are just beating on poor uh, so <laughs> poor Pat. Poor uh, Pat. Goldust breaks free, attacks Hunter again, uh, and then knocks him out of the ring. And then the it's just Goldust and China left in the ring, and the and all of the referees are holding back Goldust, like they're um, not. They are literally just like, I think he might strike her. Like, <laughs> and honestly. He might. <laughs> he might. Okay, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. Like, 
they keep going like he can't hit a woman he can't hit a woman and it's like and not to compare but girl they're pile driving women over at ecw like right. they're literally throwing them and right. i'm not saying that's like right or wrong but it's like she's putting the paws on you right like we might have to put the paws on her i don't know she wants to be here and jerry actually said it. he goes listen if you enter that ring you just have to understand like you might get hit you might right. you have to fight or whatever right and i was like okay jerry that's how it rules that, that dems the brakes baby De uh like hello i'm saying Really, you can't, really, you can't just do whatever you want, no consequences, just because you're a woman. That's that's not how it works in the ring, like, um, and not in the ring, not, not in, in the, the ring circle. Mm -mm. I and also it's crazy at one point because all the referees were on on China at one point, and she literally goes like this, and like all four get like full, like flung. She just, flung. She just flexes them off of her, she like flies. Like, no, and yeah. so then they go. They're almost like you know what? Let's block gold dust instead because I'm right. not getting thrown by this woman again. Like. Once is quite enough for me, but so, I don't know. He, something's got to give. Something's got to give here because I don't know where this is leading, but specifically in like this feud, because it's not like Marlene is going to suit up and start swinging. Like I wish. I, I, same. She's so little but, like, though. I, I, I can't imagine it, you know? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Not. So next we have. The Stone Cold interview with Vince McMahon. We haven't wow. seen Stone Cold since WrestleMania 13. And this is his time to air out them grievances. Basically, he goes and talks about how he never said I quit in that match. He says uh, Ken Shamrock could have 10 hearing aids taped to his fat head. And he would he will have a hard time hearing it because I never said it. Period. And, and you're like, oh. Uh, basically, he's like, uh, he goes on to be like, oh, Bret Hart is like talking all this trash about he, how he like kicked my ass, this, that, and the other, beat me to a bloody pulp. He's like, I hit my head on a railing. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> like that you did. And oh, basically God. just undercutting anything that Everything. Bret did in that match, which is hilarious and totally 100% stone cold. Um, he's like, Bet you're, uh, Bret, you're the biggest... <laughs> biggest whatever box of trash piece of trash piece of trash piece of trash i've ever seen um uh basically so it's like oh and if you're listening uh, like in the back and you're not crying right now why don't you uh put on a fresh pair of panties and get your ass out here Girl. because i'll kick your ass right now <laughs> and not then, the fresh pair of panties i know that's fucking crazy, crazy. um what you might call it brett um then shows up on the titan tron because that's our new favorite move and Love. uh yeah well like there's it's just becoming this ongoing like thing of feuding between the person in the ring and the titan tron um basically bret hart's like i'm finished with you to stone cold steve austin and he's like no you're not no you're not he's like you'd have to kill me to be finished with me Amazing. Either, he's like he's like you can bring uh Brett, you can bring Owen. Tell him to bring a crowbar because they're gonna need it to get my ass off of you. And and you're like so good. And you're like Jesus. You'll um, have to kill me to be finished with me is crazy. Mm -hmm. I love crazy. that crazy. And I literally wrote energy. And like it's amazing. I'm telling you, if we're if we're beefing, mm -hmm. we're beefing till the yeah. very the bitter end like mm -hmm. i just which by the way this is like really not important but it's important to me sometimes um i looked it up while we were watching stone cold is a sagittarius which is that is very that energy right, right, right. fire sign he's like you'll literally have to, i'll have to be dead in my grave for this to be done with us right right 100 percent. love that um, energy um, then he talks about like just kicking Brett's ass and he's just like I would love to kick his like pink and black ass all over again uh, he's so good so good so amazing um, and he goes like and, you know he does his stone cold things like that's the bottom line his music hits and that's that on that because damn I love that man I really do he really he's really doing really like ascending into his character and it's beautiful <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing because when he goes like to the corner and like, you know, stands and like cheers towards the crowd or whatever, it's they're not like a hundred percent there, but they're like pretty close because there were still a few people who were like boo or whatever. Right. But most of them are like on board crazy. And even like the front, the people in the front row had like um like a huge poster that said Stone Cold rules. Right. Um, and then there was like another person there too that said, like, hey Brett, like Stone Cold never said I quit. Right. They're so like yeah. they're 
uh, the Avengers have been are assembling. They're assembling. Right. They're like, you, well. You can see like he's really he's really like getting like hot as far as like the fans' attention goes. Like he's really so like the one that they're like, oh, like that's my racehorse. You know what I mean? Um, Fully. Oh my god. Yeah. And it's just like crazy and so amazing to see this because we literally started this um, after he won King of the Ring. Right. I know. Like so wild to see where we've ended up so far. Like. Yeah, how it, far he's come that and just like think of like the like tonal shift in the show from when we started to where we are now is it's like crazy it's so different but it's so different it's amazing uh so in our main event we have bret hart taking on rocky Maivia for the intercontinental championship this match kind of came about because bret hart attacked rocky Maivia last week just kind of on a whim because he was just feeling a little frisky i guess mm -hmm. um so it is announced that next week during this match, we're going to have, or during Raw, we're going to see Psycho Sid taking on Mankind. Uh, and this match is, it's serving two purposes. One, it is the opportunity for Brett to kind of like act more of the heel in wrestling matches, which we don't necessarily see too, too much. This is mm -hmm. like the first, his, or, this is how we're being introduced to him kind of working as a heel. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is to... Uh, allow Rocky to put on a match with somebody who is of the caliber of like Bret Hart. Um, yes. So it it it's a, it's a twofold. It's a hey, let's elevate Rocky by showing that he can contend with Bret, and it's also like hey, let's make sure that we know Bret's bad. So th mm -hmm. that's kind of the end game of, of this match. It's very well contested between the two. Obviously, uh, Bret Hart could have a match with like a broomstick and it would probably look great not to take anything so away from true. Rocky Maivia, but of because course. Rocky Maivia is um, so athletic and um, just, just so talented generally, like it just works. Like he has, Brett has so much to work with as far as like uh, Rocky is concerned. Yeah. Um, so true. So basically Brett's putting in work on Rocky at one point. Uh, we we are now seeing what is like essentially Brett's like new favorite finisher way to end a match way to cripple um <laughs> is that figure four on the ring post Oof. which he just doesn't let go of which causes the disqualification yeah um and then after that is just complete chaos once again because that's the name of the game in the mm -hmm. WWF so Stone Cold comes out attacks Brett and then the entire Heart Foundation. Uh, comes out also attacks Steve Austin and then the Legion of Doom comes out and chases them all out of the building and it is amazing it Which is amazing is, it is yeah. amazing so it's amazing a big like 10 out of 10 yeah so that's really the end of this one uh again we're barreling towards the in your house uh pay-per-view where we're moving along some plot points tying up some loose ends in this one we Got the reformation of the Heart Foundation, which is fantastic. Super excited for that. Really and crazy. Paul Bear got his finally. So and Ugh. and the Honky Tonk Man got his. So literally I mean, numbers one and two on your list. Like, uh, no, literally. I mean, I really I'm I'm feeling brand new. Mm. It's spring. I'm reborn again. Honky Tonk Man's guitar lays in ashes. Amazing. Uh Paul Bear will have a black eye from whatever happened and like i we don't know yet what happened with the undertaker in terms of the possible third degree burn third degree burns on his retinas but right. love to see paul get his love to see honky tonk man get his i'm very curious about the for me reformation of the heart foundation i'm really like i'm so curious now like where this is all going and like lod and their match with bulldog and owen like i'm just very very excited about this this was a goodie i no i agree and i think uh we're we're kind of getting like the structure that we can kind of come to get used to um it's gonna it's just a lot more chaotic than it was when we started this show it is there's, there's just a lot more happening and there's a Thank lot God. more it it's we're getting i don't want to say less focused on like the in in ring stuff but really as we know the only reason people, I don't want to say the only reason, a big part of the reason why people care about what's happening in the ring is the story. And we're getting better at the story. So 
win-win on all parts. That's a very good point. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of the New to Wrestling podcast. And this is so thrilling because we are doing a teeny tidbit episode on Paul Heyman's speech from his Hall of Fame induction. All right. All right, guys. So you'll see, you'll have a little extra mini episode from us talking about Paul Heyman. And we'll catch you next time. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye.